nitrogen dioxide changes into dinitrogen tetroxide, but it can also travel back the other way for it to form from dinitro tetroxide, dinitrogen tetroxide into two two nitrogen oxides, nitrogen dioxides. And the way we put this in terms of temperature is we show a an equilibrium symbol. This shows an arrow going both ways. You can see how this works in the form of a graph. Um, N2O4 is the product of this reaction and we can see that as time goes on the concentration of this goes up until it reaches an equilibrium and it levels out. Logically as the concentration of N2O4 goes up the concentration of NO2 the reactant goes down. This goes like this and the equilibrium is reached about here. So in an equilibrium you can say that when it reaches equilibrium there's the same amount of products forming as there are products reverting back to reactants. There are three main things that define a dynamic equilibrium. The first of which is that it must take place in a closed system such as this closed box so that there must may be no influence from surroundings. Second thing is that there must be a forward and reverse reaction with equal weight, equal rates, which is signified by this symbol here, as mentioned earlier. Third is that there must be no change of macroscopic properties such as temperature, pressure, and concentration. At a molecular level, the reaction must always be be occurring. Le Chatelier's principle is that when a system in dynamic equilibrium is subject to a change, the position of the equilibrium will shift to minimize the change. You need to know what happens to an equilibrium when subjected to an increase in pressure. Um, what happens is that the equilibrium will shift to the side of the reaction that gives fewer gas molecules as the, and the pressure is reduced. For a decrease in pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the side of the reaction that gives more gas molecules and the pressure is increased. An example of this is in this reaction here, PCl5 going to form PCl3 and Cl2 and vice versa, obviously. Um, if the pressure is increased, it'll go to the side, it'll go back to P PCl5 because it has fewer gas molecules on this side. However, if the pressure is decreased, then it'll go to the other side where there is more gas molecules. You also need to know what happens in a change of heat. In an increase in temperature, the endothermic reaction is favoured as this will lower the temperature and oppose the change. And vice versa for a decrease in temperature, the exothermic reaction is favoured which will raise the temperature and oppose the change. In this reaction, the re forward reaction is endothermic. So if the temperature is increased, it'll go towards PCl3 and Cl2. However, if there's a decrease in pressure, the reaction moves to the, to the left and forms this, PCl5. An increase in concentration of product means backwards reaction is favoured and will lower the concentration of product and oppose the change. Because there's more collisions of product in this case if there's more product. Um, an increase in concentration of reaction means that the forward reaction is favoured because there is more reactants, therefore more collisions and more products is formed. For example, in this equation, if the concentration of PCl3 increases, the equilibrium shifts to the left in order to reduce the concentration, and vice versa for PCl5 being increased. The Harbour process is another reaction that involves a dynamic equilibrium. This reaction produces ammonia from, N from nitrogen and hydrogen. Now the conditions that favour high yield of ammonia are high pressure because there's less moles of gas on this side um, and a low temperature because this reaction is endoth exothermic rather. So delta H equals precisely that minus 92 kilojoules, that's not kilojoules, kilojoules per mole. So if, if it's exothermic, um, a low temperature 
favors yield. And also, there is a catalyst used in this process, but that doesn't affect equilibrium. Always remember that catalysts don't affect equilibrium. Um, a compromise that has to be made is because of rate. There will always be a compromise between yield and reaction rate in an, industri in an industrial equilibrium process. For example, increasing the pressure has a, a positive effect on rate because it increases rate as it pushes molecules together, increasing their concentration. Um, the effect of temperature on the rate, the low temperature, would decrease the rate because fewer molecules have sufficient energy to react. And the catalyst increases the rate which is because it reduces activation energy. Um, so the compromises and reasons for the compromises are the pressure favoured is 200 atmospheres because that because much higher pressures need a lot more energy and expensive machinery, also safety problems. 200 atmospheres is a relatively it's a fair pressure, but it's not that much. The temperature, however, is 450 degrees Celsius because yield is sacrificed for a faster rate at a higher temperature. These conditions give about 15% yield of ammonia. The catalyst uses an iron catalyst which reduces the reduces the activation energy which then again increases the rate, the rate of reaction.